Welcome back, Vol fans, to another edition of the Vols for Life podcast. We're going to do a, another position breakdown, Tim. Uh, Post spring defensive line depth chart, and what would what do we expect there? And what's the the future looks like? And just uh, you know, what's what we got? I'll be honest, right off the bat, I expect not to be able to give you a very good depth chart because <laughs> we got so many guys that's going to be playing and uh, can inter- interchange at a couple spots. That I don't think the coaches know exactly yet Super where deep. we are. Super deep. Yeah, where we are one, two, and three at each spot. A lot of competition, a lot of guys fighting for spots. And I think it was Al Wilson said, that's what you want. That's what breeds a great defense, you know, it's yes. guys fighting for spots. Yeah, if you go out there and you know if you don't have a good practice, that you might not be number one next week, you'll bust it. You might. Go from, you know, during this off season, you might for going be going from a projected starter to third team possibly. I mean, yeah. that, that's not out of the realm on this on this position here. We are super deep, and a lot of guys that are fighting for spots. And we are. Chart. You know, we've lost a lot of games over the past few years because of this position group. Mm-hmm. You know, we just didn't have the depth at all. We didn't have talent either. A lot of years, and as a Hell of a bad combination for a team wanting to win. Yeah. And, you know, last year we uh, we were pretty deep. We played a lot of people mm-hmm. last year, uh, which was a pretty bad. Uh, I mean, big turnaround from the year before when we had to play Matthew Butler, like 42,000 snaps, you know. Huge difference. Yes. The man never come off the field. And last year, though, we had no one like that. Mm-hmm. We rotated. We stayed fresh. We were very good against the run. I think partially because of that. Mm-hmm. Let's go over the guys we lost real quick, and then obviously the who we got coming back and new faces and such. Okay, but uh, the uh, main guy we lost was Byron Young. He uh, had seven sacks last year. Drafted pretty early in the draft. Not sure if he's replaceable. Uh, that's going to be a committee cup thing with him. Um, we also lost uh, Latrell Bumpus. A uh, solid guy, max effort kind of guy who's going to uh, stop really good against the run. Wasn't very good against the pass. I think we could probably upgrade there. But he probably was a part-time don't. starter at that strong side defensive end with Tyler Barron last year. Uh, seemed like he really got a lot of play. Well, you know why? Coaches trusted him. That was it. They knew what they was getting out of him every play. And, you know, there's a lot of – trust. that trust factor means a ton – Mm-hmm. For for a coach, they very simple, and they trusted the trail. A couple more players: Dejon Terry lost him, transferred to Oklahoma, and uh, Mari McNeil transferred to, Oklahoma, yeah. uh, to uh, Colorado. You know, uh, both guys I would have loved to keep. Yeah, I would have uh, McNeil more for the future. We'll need him next year, um, or the you know the following year. Yeah. Uh, Terry would have definitely played some this year. But as long as we don't have a lot of injuries, I think we're okay at that spot. I and mean, we still got – we're still five deep probably at defense tackle. Yeah, which is probably four deeper than we have been a lot of years. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, be what it may. Yeah. I, I, I would have liked to keep all those guys, but we couldn't. Mm-hmm. And – but the correct question, do we have somebody to replace I think so. I think we're we'll be we'll be all right there at that position. Um, let's go over to some got some guys here, Tim. Okay. Uh, we'll start off with the defensive tackles. Uh, Amari Thomas. You know he'll be a popular spot for a second or third team all conference uh, selection on some of these preseason stuff. Yeah, I believe he definitely will on the postseason. I believe Amari Thomas. I'm not saying he's got the highest upside, but I do believe he's got the highest floor for anybody we have. He's going to be the guy who anchors us, and I can see him on some postseason teams and uh, cashing a check next year. He'll be a good ball player. I really don't. You know, you can you can win with a lot of Mari Thomases out there. Uh, the guy probably – this is where it gets kind of iffy on that defense tackle spot. we got two or three guys that's going to be like – Really close. Bryson Eason's probably the most talented guy there. You know, he's a guy who come here as a linebacker. 
What do you think yeah. about that? It's gained a lot of weight. Yeah, it's up got, 300 pounds or so yeah. now and um, still has a lot of quickness about him. Athletic. I've heard it said that the coaches think he's the most talented guy that they've been in a tackle spot. He, he's a guy that could break into a first-round, second-round draft pick kind of guy. He's, he's that good. Another guy that's really talented uh, that hasn't done squat, though. But rumors has he's made that jump. He's finally put it all together, at least in the spring. Yeah. And let's see what he does in the fall. But Elijah Simmons, big guy, athletic. I think you mentioned one time before the guy can dunk. Yeah. I mean, for a guy that's, what, 330 probably? If he slimmed down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's been his problem. If he slimmed down to 330, then he can dunk. He was one of the strongest guys the day he stepped onto campus. So, you know, I mean, he's got the strength. He's got, you know, obviously explosion to a degree anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, just a massive man. Stick right there in the middle. Say, push me out of the way. And uh, hopefully can push the pocket as well. Weight, I think, has always been his issue. Yeah. And you it was know. waiting on him to get put it together. But, I mean, if he can keep his weight down through the fall, through the uh, summer and on into fall practice and really keep showing of that effort. Well, that's the effort's key, Bob. There, he's never put more than one or two practices together from people who's been inside the program. And apparently he just like just stacked them together all spring long. Consistency that we've never seen out of Elijah Simmons. I think we're also holding our breath to say, you know, let's see what happens with him during the summer and into fall. But huge if he has turned the corner. Yeah, that's another guy with, with draft pick potential. Uh, you know, I, and another guy who I think will be really good at that spot, we can't talk about all these guys. No, we can't. Because uh, I, I counted 13 guys who I think we're going to play this year. You know, maybe even more. So there's plenty of guys to talk about. But the next guy who I could see possibly even starting is Omar Norman Lott. Transfer, watched him in a spring game. Very high motor. I mean, he was getting after it. Uh, I expect him to play a lot. I don't know. No, well, I know you, you're a big fan. Uh, I had not noticed him in the spring game. I was about it. I was looking at other places, apparently. And you pointed him out, and I went back and saw the film. And I'm like, yeah, I see what you're saying here. He got after it, uh, brought a lot. He'll definitely be in that rotation. Uh, right from day one, he's, he's getting some snaps. He's eating some snaps. Good, good guy, I believe. Probably the fifth guy, and that's Karat Garland. He's played a lot down there, um, and you'll see a lot of him. The, the next guy up might be uh, five-star Damon Hobbs. Well, he could be. He's a little undersized. You know, as a freshman, you wouldn't be shocked by that. Uh, but how many times we've we've got a guy, five-star, that we're like, oh, you know, he might play. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, even as a freshman, I think he might be able to come in there and play some of that three-technique um, spot, rush the passer. Very yeah. athletic, and I think that's where his future spot is. I, I don't think he's a uh, uh, one or a zero technique. I think he's not a uh, – No, I don't think you'll be seeing him on the cross from the nose or anything. He's a little undersized. He might even play some strong side defensive end this season until he can bulk up and spend some time in the weight room. Mm -hmm. But, you know, athletically uh, and potential, there's a reason he's a five-star. There's no guarantee of nothing, but uh, – not many times we've sat here and said, oh, yeah, we got a five-star. And he might not play much. So Yeah, we were usually like, hey, we're going to put you out there right now. Yeah. Can you can you come in early? <laughs> yeah. So, so you're going to play 100 snaps first ball game. <laughs> so, yeah, and this guy may not even play. I mean, that's it's where we've gotten some some depth there. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's move on to um, – the, the strong side defensive end spot where Latrell Bump, Bumpus left, where he was a part-time starter, Tyler Byron. I think Tyler Byron's going to share that spot again, uh, this time with a guy with a lot more physical skills, uh, Tyree West. Yeah, you know, coming as a freshman last year, athletically, size-wise, all that stuff, checks all the boxes. Uh, looks like what you want at the spot. 
uh, big enough, he could probably slide in, play some of that three technique also. The fact is we've got multiple guys that can probably will probably play a little slide inside and play in pass rushdowns. Uh, their body types are interchangeable to a degree. But I really like West. Uh, if Barron, his own self, uh, put us together this year, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of people that, out there that think Tyler is one of the highest ceilings on the team. Yeah, I think it, it's the uh, buy-in. I think he wanted – he's always wanted to be uh, a defensive man. But I think he's always been kind of – you know, his position might be more of a, you know, three-technique defensive tackle. But – well, as he's continued to grow, he probably at the next level. I wouldn't doubt if, even though it's bigger guys in that in the league, I would not be surprised to see him at that spot. And hopefully, the buy-in's there. I mean, he's a senior; it's now or never. And that's, you know, uh, depth chart. He's going to have to uh, play it hard. Or I think we got guys. Spot. Yeah, I think we got guys that will, you know, take. His spot, like you, another guy there that will play a lot is Dominic Bailey. I think he's a junior now. I think. Uh, I'll be honest about it. Surprised me last year. I, he's played a lot more than I thought he would. Looked good when he done it. Yeah, good ball player. Um, now to the got the position that we're the most talented town. Uh, maybe not the starter here, but the most talented group here is that Leo position, that the last rusher. You know, that's one spot that Coach Hopple has came in and targeted, not to be good at, but to be great at. He knows that he's going to be up a couple touchdowns and teams are going to be passing. And he's going to he's going to rip the quarterback's head off. That's, that's his thought process. We're going to create havoc, havoc <laughs> at the cross the line of scrimmage. And these are the guys that he's bringing in to do it. And, man, I think he has brought in some young, athletic superstars. Just they're waiting to drop. You'll, you'll know their name in a couple of years. Yeah. These guys are unreal talent. Uh, these are – I've heard one person describe them as like a combine freaks. You know, guys that's going to be, you know, the broad jump, 40, going to do real great and those type of things. They're just light. A lot of them just slide. They just got to get up to, to wait to play at this level. Uh, but let's go over them first, um, the players and individually. Roman Harrison will probably be the day one starter. Uh, you know, high motor. Uh, he's gotten better. He's and gotten better. Actually, by the end of the year last year, actually played very well. Yeah, I think he had three sacks last year, which wasn't too bad. And but, he got better as the season went on. I understand where. He'll play because he, he's good against the run, mm-hmm. and he's the leader, the elder statesman in that group because the ones behind him are still uh, wet behind the ears. Yeah, he, he was a very good ball player, but like I said, I think his I think he's, his upside's limited. The guys behind him, they're unlimited. Unlimited, unlimited pretty much. I mean, we're talking outstanding guys, but uh, the – the guy that played a lot last year is a true freshman, uh, Joshua Joseph. Uh, really good player there. He, you're going to see him a lot this year. Uh, James Pierce played some last year. Even more talented than, John, uh, yeah. than Joshua Joseph probably. There's a lot more raw come out of a high school program that wasn't nearly as advanced as Joseph did. I remember, um, I think it was uh, Austin Price said that he thought he might have uh, All-American type. Potential, yeah. Potential. Yeah, he thought he had the yeah. All-American ceiling. And uh, I would say Joseph Scott, you know, similar ceiling. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're, they're the ones that played that year last year. They've got a year in the weight room now. They're packing on hopefully a little weight. But we didn't stop there. We turned right around, went back into the recruiting, and grabbed two more last year for this coming year. Yeah. Uh, freshman Caleb Herring, uh, which has put on a lot of weight. Since he got on campus and looks to be a guy already pushing that depth chart. Yes. Uh, one of the most pleasant surprises added about 35 pounds real quick in the ballpark anyway and has looked dynamite. Mm-hmm. And you got uh, another guy who was a five-star by one service, uh, Bradley. Javian uh, Bradley. The guy's 
just he's going to have to add some weight. I mean, it's he's I'm guessing looking at a red shirt because I'm going to say the last thing I saw was when he came in was around 215. He's going to need to be at least 240 probably to get on the field much. I, I saw a picture of him. He was thicker than I thought, but I know in his high school film, you know, he looked like a uh, small forward out there playing, you know, I put him right off the basketball court, it looks like. I mean, long, lean, very lean. He's going to have to pack on the weight. But, you know, I can see him getting a few snaps because he's, he's part of that deeper rotation. He won't have to do it much, but, you know, against a – Connecticut or somebody he might toward the end of the year he may get quite a few snaps and uh, but those four guys talent wise are, uh, are not what we've been having on this roster in quite some time we went a long stretch there where we had a hard time finding somebody that could disrupt I mean we it was a Super long time with, you know, basically uh, Barnett was the only guy we had that done anything for a long, long stretch. But I think that those days are over because not only did we have these guys we got on this roster right now, which are freshmen and sophomores, but we're continuing to recruit that position at a very high level. So, yeah, uh, he's not resting on his laurels. Uh, Heupel is still targeting that spot at the high school ranks, and uh, got some of the biggest names in the country looking at us. So we'll see on that. Bob, before we get off here, I want to mention three other guys that I love their potential. I don't think they're going to help this year because of freshmen. Uh-huh. Number one, Tyree Weathersby. Yeah. He's probably another three technique, defensive tackle. Uh, man, you turn on his tape, and how he wasn't at the top 30 player in the country someday. Sometimes I've wondered, because I mean, I've seen everything out of him. I saw out of Hobbs. Um, he was somebody you two was in on early, and he blew up later after he had uh, committed to us, thank goodness. <laughs> People started noticing him, and and I don't know, maybe it's the – no, I won't even say that. I was going to say maybe it's his uh, competition he played against. But you, Bob, if you see a big man that size – run the way he does. I don't care what kind of competition. He's still big. He's still fast. I really like Ty, Tyree Weathersby. Yeah, I think the coaches staff um, was very high on him. Thought they got a steal. Everything I've heard about him ever since he got, you know, he committed to us was that, you know, they really love this guy. He, he's a future big-time ball player for us. Mm-hmm. And like you said, that's a guy. It's a name to remember. Because you're going to hear it called on, on Saturdays. Well, that brings two other guys that got in on early, Bob, that uh, they're happy with since they've got on campus. They're pleasantly surprised out of Nathan Robinson, Trevor Duncan. I do not believe both of them stay on defensive line. I believe you're going to see Trevor Duncan move right off his tackle eventually, but he's going to start out at defensive line, and we'll see from there. They, they promise him a shot there. They'll give him a shot. Yeah, I think they think his ceiling is higher at a tackle spot. But, and that's a spot we really need. But, you know, he's a very good athlete. And again, it's another guy's when you look at him. Well, he's got that frame you look for an offensive tackle to begin with. Long, long arm, uh, good feet. Yeah, Rob, Robinson Duncan looks like. SEC football players. Yeah, they've. Uh, I know uh, Nathan Robson was one of the guys that they were talking about quite a bit. He come in. He's a guy that had a late growth spurt. Mm-hmm. Was overlooked. All of a sudden, he shot up several inches, forty pounds. You know, and you know everyone else was late to the party. Uh, he was ours. He's, I reckon he's been on campus. That he'd come in looking like Tarzan. Now I don't know if he's going to play like Jade or not. But he wowed people when he come down there this spring. Yeah, a heck of a ball player, I think, in the future. Just a freshman, though. You know how line of scrimmage, defensive tackles, freshman goes. Uh, you just don't see many play. But he's a guy who I think we'll see a lot of in the future. Yeah, barring injury, he's going to be a player for us down the road. Yeah, won't probably play any of this year, I don't think. But – You'll definitely, I think you will see him next year. 
Cause we'll be thin at that spot next year. We're, we'll be probably looking at picking up a transfer or two at that defensive tackle spot next yeah, year. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised by that at all. But for the 23 season, I'm super excited about this defensive line. I see us really pushing and putting pressure on offenses. We're about to make a turnaround on defense. I agree. Very high upside for a lot of these guys. A lot of them's just young. I believe with so many guys competing for those spots that that competition will breed success in the offseason. These guys are going to keep pushing each other, pushing each other. We're going to get a guy or two out of that group that blossoms. Yeah, that, that just has a great, great year. They're going to blow up. I don't know who, who it would be, but when you have that many at a, at a position group that there's, aren't devoid of talent and you have that competition, somebody with the cream will rise to the top. Yeah, excited times. Um, and, you know, your defensive line, like we talked about before, defensive line is great, and then your your defense is going to be good. And and it know, starts right there. It starts right there. So if you're as excited as we are about this defensive line and the team in general, hey, give us a like if you don't care. Uh, subscribe to us. Uh, listen. We'll have some more content coming out. Uh, make a comment. Tell us we're done on this guy. Tell us we overlooked this other guy. Uh, tell Bob he's shorter than Danny DeVito. And uh, hit the notification bell. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you don't miss an episode. But yeah. Anything to add, Bob? Uh, no, that's about it, Tim. Right. I think I think uh, I think we've wrapped this up pretty good. I think that was a good episode. Well, I hope that, I hope you do. So, till next time, go big orange, go big orange.